All right, so the entry signals are pretty darn simple. So we do have the uh, indicator settings were given to us, and then we have the long entry and short entries here. Uh, simply put, price must be up, you know, above the sloping, so we do need a sloping green trigger lines here, right? So in the image, you can see how the, the trigger lines are filled in with green or red. So the trigger lines need to be filled in with green. And, you know, now colors, so I just want to make sure that everybody understands, colors cannot be detected in NinjaTrader, right? NinjaTrader does not provide any way to read colors from another indicator, right? So don't be, so I don't want anybody to misconstrue that, oh, you know, that Bloodhound, can simply, you know, you just plug in green or red in a bloodhound and there you go. No, when it, when an indicator changes colors like this, and let's go to the real chart here. Yeah, here we go. So, right, so we can see the indicators changing from red to green in the fill area, right? So the fill area is green or red. You have to understand what is it, what it, what condition with that indicator is causing the indicator to change colors, right? That's what you have to do uh, because, you know, as said, you cannot read colors with NinjaTrader. So to, so to know when an indicator is, you know, changes colors, you have to know what the condition is. And so with the trigger lines, um, it's basically, you have two lines here. Um, so we can see we have a white line and a gray line. Right, so if the white line is on top, which you know this is going to be the basically the faster moving average of the trigger lines. So when the faster line is on top, the indicator shades green. Right, if the faster line is below the slower line, then it's then it's red. Right, so you have to know what those conditions are that's causing your indicator to change colors. Right, and so now that we know what the conditions are, we can actually build that condition with Bloodhound. So we can just say, you know, is the faster line above the slower line? Then we know the indicator's green. If the faster line is below the slower line, then we know the indicator is shading red, right? So that is our first condition, is price needs to be above the trigger line. So this is actually, you know, two conditions in one, right? So first of all, price needs to be above the tr the trigger line. You know, so we have to go, well, right? The which trigger line? Well, we can see that it needs to be above the faster trigger line. Right? So in this case, it's going to be the white line here, which is the faster line. So yeah, so we need price above the faster trigger line, because the trigger lines is two two moving averages. So, and then we also need it to be sloping. So let's see if we have an example here. I thought I saw an example. Yeah, yeah. So we can see that. Well, it looks like the faster line pretty much does have a slope to it. But <clears throat> if we look at the slower line, right, the gray line there we can see that it does kind of flatten out. You know, so that's sloping. So I'm, I'm just gonna guess that the uh, sloping condition probably applies to the slower line there. Yeah, probably applies to the slower line there. All right, so there we go. So there's our, our, our two conditions, price above, and then we need a, we need a sloping, uh, slower, trigger line there. Right. The next uh, condition, I guess, yeah, this, so remember, uh, so number one is, is two conditions in one there. And so the, the next condition is we're looking for the indicator, red dot, uh, indicator changes to blue dot there. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're looking for the and uh, there we go. So we're looking for the ATR trailing stop next. So the next condition is on the ATR trailing stop. 
and we're just simply looking for the ATR trailing stop, right, to flip directions, right, to go from uh, red to blue. And again, you know, you can't read the red or blue, so you have to know what is changing the indicator from red to blue. Well, we can see if if the indicator is above price, it's red. Or another way to say that, if price is below the indicator, it's red. And then when the closing price is above the indicator, then the indicator is blue. So we're just simply looking at the, you know, the closing price of the bar and checking, you know, is the closing price of the bar above the ATR trailing stop um, or yeah, is it above it or is it below it, right? So we're looking for that, that basically we're looking for that crossover. Um, yeah, so when, when the closing price crosses over the uh, ATR trailing stop, that's when it uh, flip, changes colors there. Yeah. So we're looking for that um, price crossing over the trailing stop. All right, and then the rest of it is basically for Blackbird. So setting up the uh, entry order, you know, with using a limit entry order, and then uh, the stop loss. So this actually is not a stop entry. It is a stop loss, just to be clear. All right, um, so that is it. And so um, that's all the conditions. And so let's get the building here. All right, so I already have Bloodhound on my chart. Uh, so I'm going to use the button up here on the top of the chart here where it says empty template. Click on that and that opens up the Bloodhound interface. Let me just open this up a little bit more. So first thing you want to do is put in a file name here. So I'm going to hit the change button there. All right, so we're ready to start building now. So we have a file name and we have, well, a name for the logic template. Um, so yeah, now we're ready to start building. So let's let's do the first condition is determine is the trigger lines. And actually, let me take a moment just just in case people aren't uh, familiar. These AMA indicators, the AMA ATR trailing stop, and the AMA trigger lines, those come from Lizard uh, Trader. These are a part of their free library. So if you go to lizardtrader.com, <clears throat> that's where these indicators come from. Uh, so we can go to like downloads. Let's see, yeah, they have a free trial and then they have free indicators here. And then, yeah, are you are you on Ninja 7 or Ninja 8? So anyways, that's where these, these two indicators, these um, the AMA ATR trailing stop and the AMA trigger lines, that's where they come from. Also, you can get them on Futures IO. So if you yeah, if you have a, a membership with Futures IO, you'll be able to download these indicators off of Futures IO as well. Now we can start building. Okay. So to determine, so again, just to kind of reiterate, to determine whether the fill color is green or red we're going to compare the fast line to the slower line, right? If the fast line, which is the white line, if it's above, then we know the indicator is shading green. If the fast line is below the slower line, then we know it's red. So we're going to do a comparison, right? We're going to compare the fast line to the slow line. All right. So there's our comparison solver. Now let's give this a name here. Uh, all right, so this is gonna tell us the trigger line directions. All right, so next step, input A. Input A, well that's gonna be the fast line. And then down here, input B, that will be the slow line. All right. So let's go, and again, we. We were given we were given the settings here for the trigger lines, right? So the fast trigger line is 80 and the slow trigger line is 20, which those are actually the, the default settings. So we don't really need to change any, any, any settings here. So let's go in and 
set up the fast line there. All right, so we need to go into the lizard indicators folder and scroll down to the trigger lines. Okay, so there's our trigger lines. Yeah, and as we can see, we have yeah the average period, which is going to be the slower line, is 20, and the trigger period, which is the faster, um, is already set to 80. So. All right, um, and so we want the trigger line. That's going to be the faster one. The average, right, is going to be the slower line. So the trigger line is already selected for us. So we can just click OK. And next, we need to plug in the the slow trigger lines, right? So you can see we already have results on here. So we're actually comparing right now. It's comparing the the fast trigger line to the SMA 14. So we're going to replace the SMA 14 with the trigger lines but the slow the slow line or the average trigger line. So again, let's go into lizard indicators and scroll down. There's our trigger lines. So we already know uh, we're just using the default uh, periods here of 80 and 20, but this time we want the average lines. So we want to look at the average line there. Um, and actually, yeah, we have an actual, this is, yeah, uh, these these indicators from, from lizard indicators are, are actually very well programmed. You can see that there's actually an output here called trend. Um, and this tells you uh, whether the indicator is trending up or trending down. You know, so we could have used that, but, you know, it, um, yeah, we could have used this this trend output, but with a different solver. Um, but I, I won't get into that now. There's other other workshop videos that kind of explain how to use this. So, but for now, we'll just stay on the track that we're we're with here. So we have the average line selected. Let's click OK, and there we go. So now we can see that Bloodhound matches up with the indicator, right? So when the indicator is crossed up, right, we have a long output. So the green fill matches the green bloodhound output. And when the indicator is basically, uh, you know, in a down direction, um, we have a short output, right? And they switch right when the indicator crosses right there. So there we go. So there is, um, determining whether right the trigger lines are green or if the trigger lines are red right so for a long the trigger lines have to be green right so in other words bloodhound needs to have this long output coming from this solver here all right next part uh, let's let's do the slope um, the slope of the trigger line there so to do that, we're going to go to our solver nodes um, again and go down and pick the slope solver there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to rename this here. All right, so we're going to check the slope of the uh, average trigger lines. All right, so our input. We're going to replace the SMA indicator with the trigger lines. So again, we're going to go to lizard indicators, scroll down to the trigger lines. There's our trigger lines, and we're, we're yeah. So we're going to check the slope of the average li uh, line there. So let's select that one, call it good. All right. So now we need to find an area on the chart something like this, you know, where some kind of area that you would consider as flat, right? So it definitely looks like, you know, our um, average trigger line here, you know, looks kind of flattish, right? So once we find an area, we then need to start adjusting our slope parameters, right? So we have a minimum and maximum slope here. 
Um, and so what I would suggest is starting off something very small, like half a tick of slope for an indicator. And um, yeah, so if I put in half a tick for both, you know, wow, you can see that it just kind of wipes out this huge area here. Um, and so even, you know, even this area here, you know, where, you know, it looks like it has a bit of a slope to it, um, you know, is, is considered not having a slope. Or I, I should say, this slope is not gr is not is not great enough. So maybe half a tick is a little too much. So let's try maybe a third of a tick, something like that. And let's see what happens. Yeah. So we can see that this this little area in here. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. So again, we're looking at the gray line. That's the, the average trigger line there, you know. So basically, you just have to kind of play with this, the, the slope amounts here, and figure out, you know, what, what you like, what seems to work for you, you know. So let's try a quarter of a tick. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, well, apparently, I guess this area here, <clears throat> Um, it's just, you know, kind of flattened out. This area here is just as flat as this area over here. And I guess that makes sense because if you look at it, price is basically, you know, consolidating right here, right? It's just bouncing up and down, up and down, you know, so that would definitely cause a moving average to kind of flatten out there. So, um, yeah, so I'll just leave it at a quarter of a tick there, um, you know, and you'll find that you know, you may need to adjust this depending obviously on your Renko bar settings, but also on the instrument here. You know, different instruments are gonna have different volatility and right, so they're gonna cause, you know, the slope of your indicator to change, you know, with the volatility here. You know, so if we were using this on the NQ, that's gonna be a lot more volatile. And so you might need to increase the slope amount to maybe you know 0.35 or 0.45 something like that you know the the ES you know the S&P futures usually is not that volatile usually it's the 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 least volatile of um, the uh, futures contracts out there you know so the ES you know you might need to have a really small uh, slope size for the ES, you know, so you just have to play around with that and figure out, you know, what, what, what you like, you know, for whatever an instrument you want to trade there. So we'll leave it there for now. And let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. So now we need to, to check whether price is above the trigger line or if price is below the trigger line. So we need, um, Let's grab another comparison solver here. Let's connect that in. All right, so we're comparing price, and in this case, it's gonna be the closing price of the bar. So input A is gonna be price, and input B will be our trigger lines. So again, let's go back to lizard indicators scroll down here to the trigger lines this time we actually want the trigger line so we're going to compare the close of the bar to the trigger line right the white line so um there we go it's already selected for us so we can just click ok and so now if we look at our chart yeah, let's get rid of that um, basically, here, uh, there's a good example. Right here, we can see, right, the close of the bar crosses below the, uh, the, the uh, white trigger line, right, the faster trigger line there, right? So as soon as price is below that, there we go. 
that's a short so and again once price crosses back above right once that closing price is above the fast trigger line right the um, the output changes to long right so if the close is above the fast trigger line then we have a long output as soon as the closing price goes below that trigger line it we're getting a short output so now we can actually uh, start combining some of these conditions together so let's grab an and node and we want all of these conditions together and let's take a look here yeah so let's take a look at this here so all right so we we have the trigger lines you know uh, basically crossed up so the trigger lines are green you know, have a green fill and uh, the bars are definitely above the trigger lines so you might be wondering well how can we don't have a long output right here what happened to the output on you know these two bars here well uh, that's because the slow line the average trigger line is too flat so once that average trigger line started sloping up enough then we started getting this long output right so basically this output that we're seeing is is the permission conditions or the preconditions that tell you it's okay that the indicators are all lined up to wait for the entry condition now okay and so now what we're waiting for is for the, the ATR trailing stop line to flip directions, right? So we have uh, basically price and our trigger line conditions all met. That's, that's number one. So if we bring up our rules here. So basically what we built is rule number one for longs and rule number one for shorts, right? So we have price above the trigger lines we have a sloping trigger line and the trigger lines are green um, inside the fill area and of course we have the all the opposite conditions for a short last thing to do is to build basically rule number two um, is we're looking for the red dot to change to the blue dots so again, that's just um, that is just a price crossing, you know, right? So when it goes from blue or red to blue, that's when price crosses the ATR trailing stop indicator. Let's see. All right, so let's get Bloodhound back open again there. And so the next solver that we want is a crossover solver. Let's connect that in. All right, so what are we crossing over here? Um, basically, it's price crossing over the ATR trailing stop indicator all right so input a that is going to be the price right the bar prices and again we're just going to use the closing price of the bar and then input b well that's going to be the atr trailing stop and um, i need to pull up the rules here so we do have <clears throat> some indicator settings for the ATR trailing stop here. All right, so let's go into the lizard indicators folder. And there is our ATR trailing stop indicator. And let's see, so the multiplier is 1.2. 
and the period, there we go, is 14. And that's what we need. And next, we need to figure out, well, what plot do we want to use? Well, um, with the, with, well, yeah, with, with a lot of, a lot of these um, indicators from Lizard Trader, right, they have a dot and a line. So you'll, you'll have two plots that are the same thing, right? You have a stop dot and a stop line, right? So the dot is obviously the dot on the chart and the line is the line. You can see, right, they're both the same. So it doesn't matter if you pick the, the stop dot or you can pick the stop line, right? Both of those plots are the same. It's two plots on top of each other, right? It's just, you know, just gives you, gives you that unique visual look there. Um, that indicator, that lizard indicator has, has done there. So the stop dot um, is basically what we want or the stop line, either one, doesn't matter whichever one you, you like to use. Um, I'll just keep it on the stop dots. So we can click OK. And let's take a look at the chart. All right, and there we go. So we can see whenever price right uh, crosses the ATR trailing line there right we're getting a signal there so we can now take this AND node and now if we connect in the crossover condition there we go there is our discrete signal right there Yeah, so there we have it. All right, well that does it for that question. We're done. So we, we have the um, trade signals, right? So we have the, the long entry and the short entry trade signal conditions. And so the next part will be um, in next week's Blackbird workshop will basically uh, plug in this um, Bloodhound uh, system here into Blackbird and we'll create the entry orders and create the stop loss orders uh, and trailing yeah so we'll create the trailing stop loss orders there so and let's see there's also some a ATM instructions here um, but again yeah that would, that would all be for Blackbird so We'll revisit the rest of this um, next week when there's a Blackbird workshop.